In this video, let's make a small DC load. We've got quite a few videos on our channel of professional commercial DC loads you can buy at various price points and various power and performance. And if you dig through the channel, you want to make something or buy something that's pre-made, then you can find evaluations of some various units up on the channel. In this video, we're going to make our own load. It'll be fairly simple and probably pretty practical. The load is going to consist of two wire wound resistors mounted inside of an aluminum extruded project box. A fairly simple design, easy to wire, but hopefully we picked values that are useful values for power supply testing. One of the resistors is a 3.3 ohm, 1%, 10 watt wire wound resistor. It costs about four bucks. The other resistor is a 5 ohm, 10 watt resistor. It's a 5% value and it also costs around $4. The two resistors can easily fit within this small aluminum extruded chassis. They're widely, widely available and mount BNC jacks on both ends. These are the cheaper non-binding post style jacks. Uh, they're real cheap and basically you just wire the two things up. When you bolt the resistors to the little box, it lets heat sink into the box. Um, so uh, you probably never want to get close to the 10 watt rating of the parts, but probably for a short duration, you can do close to that. The two resistors get bolted down with metric screws, 2.5 millimeter screws with nuts on them. If you're careful when you drill the holes and you don't drill through the resistor pad, the square part on the side, uh, the mounting bracket that's built into the resistor, you might be able to thread a two and a half millimeter screw into it. Uh, I used the drill and drilled the holes with the same drill and it bore out the hole on the resistor a little bit. So I had to use nuts. Um, two and a half millimeter nuts and screws are common some places and maybe not so common other places but they're a nice thing to have when you're building little projects yeah it might make sense to put a couple of drops of heat sink putty on here under the resistor and between it and the case i didn't do that i would have to walk upstairs and that just sounded like work the resistors get wired to the binding posts with Silicone wire. I like it because it has a good temperature characteristic. It uh, definitely holds up well too. There isn't even really a need to put heat shrink or anything on any of this because it's all within the box and completely safe. Much better than just having a resistor sitting out on my bench when I'm testing a power supply. It's really as simple as you can get for a power supply load tester, but let's take a look and see what th sort of values we can test with these particular resistors. To get the power through a resistor, you can multiply the resistance times the current, or you can square the voltage and divide it by the resistance. So a 3.3 ohm resistor with 3.3 volts across it would produce one amp or 3.3 watts. If the part is rated at 10 watts, then that's 33% of the max, which is within a safe range. You can operate that for quite a while. The maximum voltage that you could put across that resistor would be 5.74 volts before you hit 25 watts. If you put the same 5 ohm resistor or 5 volts across that same 3.3 ohm resistor, you'd get 1.5 amps or 7.58 watts, which is 76% of the maximum. I put it red here on the chart just because it's getting to be a little bit on the dicier end. It's better to stay at, at a lower amount, but lots of times people use a 75, 80% derating criteria. And for power supply testing, this is not gonna be an endurance test. If you're running it for hours, you probably don't wanna do that without putting a fan on the, on the load here. Okay, with a five ohm resistor at 3.3 volts, you get 0.6 amps and that's only 21% of the load. And the five ohms with five volts would produce one amp. And of course you could get 8.3 ohms by connecting the two ends of the boxes or the box together. That would give you yet a lower current, but another test point. 
What I really like best about this approach is just the convenience factor. To hook up a electronic DC electronic load, I've got to hook up power and do a bunch of other things to set it up and then try to remember the menu system on the more complicated ones. And this gets you the same result for a 5 volt power supply to some degree. You can't load up and down and do all sorts of stuff, but it'll let us see things like ripple and all that sort of stuff quite easily just by hooking up a 1 amp load or uh, if it's on the 3.3, use the 3.3 ohms, get 1 amp. If it's on the 5 volt side, use a 5 ohms and get a 1 amp. It should be plenty good enough for doing some rough power supply testing. And if you're building your own little DC to DC converter or something like that, it's a, it's a good way to test that as well. Pick your own resistor values if you want to do something similar, if you have different voltages you want to do. Having something that's small and handheld and doesn't require setup and anything else is very useful. Here's a shot at the bottom. I've added rubber feet to the bottom. Uh, and there's a little trick here for rubber feet too that I learned not too long ago. They can, they can be really expensive when you go to buy rubber feet, but there's a very, very inexpensive way to get these kinds of little sticky gummy rubber feet. Just about any hardware store will sell these and they are used with kitchen cabinet doors to keep you from slamming the cabinet door wood against wood. The little rubber bumpers, I'm not really sure what they're called. I think I bought these off Amazon and let's see, they're made by 3M. Yeah, come in sheets. I, I don't think they're very expensive. Uh, I think I got a couple of sheets of these for five or ten bucks and when you go to buy rubber feet it might cost you a buck a piece and they add up pretty quickly when you're making a lot of little projects and you don't really too, feel too bad if these get damaged because they're so cheap and they definitely definitely do the job for the bottom of small enclosures like this. The real goal is keeping those screw heads off the uh, surface. You're bench or countertop or kitchen table if that's where you work. Let's keep peace with those around us by not scratching up the furniture. The case that I used was these 80 by 50 by 20 size case. Make sure you get one that you can open the top otherwise it'll be awfully hard to screw the resistor in. These are in a clamshell with caps at the end and you screw them together. Well, like everything else they've gone up in price a little bit recently. I think I bought quite a few of them for probably half this price not long ago. But that, hey, even at four bucks, that's not a lot of money. We're talking 12 bucks to make a decent load that's small and easy to use. Well, this ticks the boxes for a small load. Not variable, not particularly fancy, but definitely small and easy to use. And it will do the job for what I want to do, which is test the power supply I just built. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products, and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.